welcome back welcome back guys now i'm gonna do a very typical youtube thing where i ask you guys to please like subscribe and share with your friends because putting in a lot of work if you find it useful like share comment subscribe do the whole thing thank you and good luck so as i mentioned in the powerpoint the headings that they gave us from um, the examiner's report were the title an introduction a main body recommendations and justifications the last thing is policy upgrade or policy creation so you can either upgrade a policy or create a policy bear with me on this the way i've done mine is maybe a bit convoluted but if i explain it it will make perfect sense so these are the original headings that was given to us from the examiner's report i've changed it changed it ever so slightly it's still the same content but i've made a few changes so um, my title again this is just the main headings thing my headings thing the title is going to be management report i still have my introduction I still have my main body and down here I have recommendations and justifications, but I've changed it around slightly. But let me go through and explain what I've done. So an introduction, an introduction is typically supposed to be what you're going to be doing for the rest of the book or the paper or the, or the coursework, the assignment, whatever you're doing. An introduction is supposed to introduce to the reader what's going to happen. So all I've done in this, very short, very sweet. You don't, you can add as much as you want. If your teacher tells you to add more, add more. If you think you want to add less, add less. I've simply outlined what I'm going to be doing in my document. So I said this document serves the purpose of reviewing the evidence provided on the incident, assessing the security policies in place at, I think it's BCTAA, or choose your company, that's fine compare the actions taken versus the actions that were to be taken so compare what people did versus what they were supposed to do suggesting recommendations which would aim to reduce the likelihood of this um, thing happening again obviously i left out a few things but that's fine and then i've said an incident took place over the bank holiday from friday to monday uh, put the dates in whatever your dates are put your dates in uh, where two of the companies inside the building had items stolen there were reports of pickpockets active at the, um, the party there should be party on the 20th floor on the saturday add as much detail as you want here my document is so long already i didn't want to add too much for introduction but again just if you even google how to write an introduction or what is an in introduction's purpose you will get loads of points so i think introduction is probably the easiest one on the list along with obviously the title which is management report so this would be the very top of my document the name of my document is going to be management report and i've introduced what i'm going to be speaking about in the document now for main body um the first thing i've done i've said firstly i will outline the mistakes which i think were made by all the parties involved they are in no particular order and i didn't specify who made the mistake i simply said the mistake was made now the examiner's report again had about 13 of them i didn't want to go over 13 that was going to be way too long my videos are way too long anyway so i listed the first or the six that i think would be nice and easy to explain on video so i've so imagine you've listed all your mistakes you you go through your evidence you go through your scenario you go through your brief you check everything and you say these are the things that i think people did wrong make a list of it um this is a simple bullet pointed list it doesn't have to be a whole paragraph bullet pointed list i think work perfectly fine once they are fully fledged sentences so don't say no checks were done right give a full sentence so when someone reads it they can refer to the evidence the scenario or the brief and say okay i, I remember that thing because it's clearly explained here now after i do all the mistakes made i do recommendations and justifications in one go and this is where it might get a bit confusing so let me explain again just bear with me um so the first thing i ask myself can one recommendation and or justification be used for the same thing so the mistake can i use one recommendation to solve multiple mistakes in some cases you might be able to if you can perfect if you cannot perfect so i've said for example number one and number two could be tied together so if i go back to number one i could probably use the same uh, thing to solve both these problems because both of them were linked to things being left out in the open things being stolen because they were left out in the open uh, things not being noted down so on and so forth so if you can find commonality between the mistakes and you can use one suggestion or one recommendation to to help that mistake never happen again that's what i would do so let me go through and explain so i have 
let's say another mini template inside of our recommendations and justifications and i say mistakes covered so the mistakes being mentioned in this one i've said one two and three i only said one and two before but i actually went back and said one two and three could probably be answered in this entire section and i've said the policy followed I've asked the question, was the policy followed for the first one? And the answer, there is currently no policy in place to deal with the shortage of equipment, uh, sorry, the storage of equipment. As there was no policy present, this was left to the, this should be the discretion of the members of staff. Same thing is going to be for uh, serial numbers of laptops and phones were not taken or recorded, as well as IMEI identif as, as well as IMEI identifiers of smartphones. Again, there was there is no policy in place, and more or less the same thing being said again. I could have really only written this once, but I wanted to do it three different times to show that you can write three different answers, even if they are similar. So there might have been a policy for the first one. There might not have been a policy for the second one, but the recommendation, the way to fix that issue can still be the same fix. So let me repeat. Uh, let's just say for argument's sake, this one, there was a policy in place, but people just didn't follow it. Yeah, right? And for this one, there was no policy in place. That's perfectly fine. At the bottom, I can say I can use the same recommendation, the same fix, the same thing to help in the future to solve both those issues. You don't have to do it like this. Whichever way you decide to do it is fine. But the main thing I want you guys to keep note of is I'm only answering these questions here. Um, I have a title, obviously. I have an introduction. I have a main body and I have recommendations. So for every problem I find, every mistake that they've made, I'm going to come in. I'm going to make a recommendation I'm, and, and I'm going to justify it. And I'm going to also maybe update the policy or even create a policy. And I think I have a no, um, some notes somewhere. Bear with me while I scroll down. I'm not sure if I read number three, but again, there's no details in any policy and it's down to the discretion of the staff, so on and so forth. So what I have then come and said after that, uh, this is my recommendation I'm, and, and I justified it directly under. I've said a policy could be put in place that follows the following rules. Rule number one, um, in this instance, it says as soon as a new device has been, not beanie, as being purchased, it is to be tagged with some details. These details could be the number in the pool that device is. The most recent number would be the um, the most recent device. So let's say I have 10 um, iPhones already and the company decides to buy 10 more. When those 10 new iPhones come in, I'm going to number them 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, just so I have the items numbered. And with those, I can maybe add a bit more detail when they were bought, um, the network, whatever details I want to put on them. This is a good way to, to keep track of your stuff and to keep track of who's using it, when it's being used, which one is um, was used specifically, just a way to tag the device itself. And the reason, so this is my justification for doing this thing. So what I've done is I've recommended here my A, let me zoom in some more, zoom in as much as I can. I've recommended in A, and what I've gone ahead and done right under it is given the reason. Now you can separate this fully. So you can have a massive list of recommendations, let's say five or 10. I've only done one problem here, but you can have a massive list of recommendations and under the recommendations, you can justify it like in a big, nice paragraph. I'm not a paragraph guy because I think I start to get a bit confused when I do paragraphs. I like bullet points. I like numbering things. I like things being straight and even. So this for me makes sense. This is my recommendation. This is my reason for recommending that. This is my recommendation. This is my reason for recommending. And I keep doing that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Another thing I've said is, and again, uh, these details could be the storage location of the device. That's another piece of information that could be put on the device. And without me even reading what I have here, let, let me try and think of um, something else. I'll still read it, but imagine on the back of your device, it, it says, uh, I, I don't know, Samsung Galaxy S22, uh, storage location, locker one, um, uh, section five. So when someone needs to go put something back, they don't need to go and check a database. They can simply look at the back of the device and say, okay, I'm done with this phone now. And it tells me exactly where I should put it because I might have 10 lockers and I don't I don't just want to stick it anywhere. I want to put it back exactly where it's supposed to go so that when people need to find it for whatever reason, the IT guy might need to update it. Someone else might need to use it for a specific reason because maybe a client that they're speaking to only knows that phone number. Again, it doesn't matter why. So think of all the reasons, the things that you can do to make sure that the thing that happened before doesn't happen again. And it doesn't need to be directly tied to make sure um, the phone is put away. That's not the only thing you can do. There are other things that you can do around that as well. 
So let me go back to this one. The storage location of the device should be added to the back of the device as well. Reason being, uh, there being a policy stating that devices need to be put in their dedicated storage locations would encourage staff to return them once they're not in use, keeping them out of sight and very likely out of the reach for nefarious individuals. So nefarious again just means bad. I remember this word because it keeps coming up in the Unit 11 stuff. So if it's out of sight, um, it's probably going to be out of reach for people who want to steal stuff. That's my reasoning there. And if you encourage this by making it very easy for people to know where to put it. So you turn the phone over, it says storage location five locker one. You just go and put it there straight away. Whereas you might be like, where is this supposed to go? Let me let me go and ask Mike. Let me leave it here. Go and ask Mike. Let me leave it here. Go and ask Mary. That's my reasoning behind it. It might be um, a bit weird, but that was just my reasoning behind it. And I have another one as well. I say, so this is C, the person or department in charge of monitoring devices. So again, I'm going to have storage locker five, uh, shelf one, whatever. And then the person in charge of it, the department that this specific phone comes from might be marketing. And I go put this back in the marketing section again. It's just a nice, easy way for people to keep track of things um, when you number it and label it. And the reason I have for this, making, uh, sorry, make it, make it the responsible, <laughs> sorry, make it the responsibility of specific people to keep track of devices rather than this being done ad hoc. So as and when necessary, make it a standard thing. So we know that on Friday, the manager, supervisor, or the team leader of this department is going to make sure that all the phones are in the right places, being charged over the weekend, everything is being updated, so on and so forth. And, and I say again, this would allow for timelines of missing or damaged devices to be easily established because I can simply go to um, the manager of accounting and be like, do you have any devices that are damaged? You'll be like, oh yeah, um, last week I made a note of this one being damaged. Whereas imagine if it's a 200 people team or 200 person team, sorry, and I go and ask, uh, are there any phones damaged? People might not know. Cause like, I, I don't know. I haven't used phones in weeks. Whereas if you have a dedicated person who's there and that's a part of their role is to check up on IT equipment, they'll be like, oh yeah, I noticed that in the accounting department, we had one phone missing. In the IT department, we had one phone broken. In this department, that was my reasoning behind that. All right. And for number two, um, I say, and again, this goes back to a policy could be put in place that follows the following rules. And we have rule one here, and I've mentioned everything under rule one. Another rule that could be done is there should be um, a log. There should be log housing. There should be a log housing all the details of a device such as. So not only do we put some details on the back of the device, a log, we, we could use a Word document, we could use a spreadsheet, we could use a database, we could use an online system. It really doesn't matter once there's a log somewhere. So the log would have these specific pieces of information or data, whatever you want to call it, MAC addresses. So again, that's a physical address that's tied to every network capable device or every internet capable device. Uh, we have serial numbers, model numbers, IMEA numbers, any unique identifiers of that phone. So again, all of these things would help you to identify the phone very quickly. So MAC address and IMEI are probably the two that are more unique than everything else because serial numbers can be um, copied over and model numbers. Again, everybody who has a Samsung Galaxy S23 has a Samsung Galaxy S23, right? It's the same model number, but the IMEI numbers would be different because they wouldn't work on the same network. And the MAC addresses have to be different as well because again, they wouldn't work on the same network. Um, again, in this log, we, we would have MAC address, serial numbers and so on. And we would also have in the log, the last person to use the device, the date and time it was taken out and returned. So let's say Mike took out the, the phone uh, on Friday at 5 p.m. and he brought it back at 6 p.m. There's going to be a log saying Mike took it at 5, brought it back at, at, at 6. Reason being, if something goes missing, I can go and check the log who took the phone out last, go and question that specific person rather than running around asking people, oh, did you, did anyone see a phone on, on Friday at 2 p.m. when everyone was having lunch? I can go to that specific person and say, what happened? And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to um, uh, fire the person or get the person fired. It's simply a case of, okay, what happened? Now that we know what happened, we can account for certain things. Okay, if, if, if that phone was stolen, and you say you took it out at two o'clock and we find out that, that it was stolen on this day at this time, we can block the phone. Um, if the person who stole the phone was making international charges, for example, we can call the phone company and make sure that those charges aren't sent to us. Whatever reason you think is uh, necessary, you can put it here. And my reason for doing all of this, um, having, let me put that in capital, excuse me. Having a log would make it easy to determine when the device was removed from storage and for what reason. So you might 
have a few fields in the log itself having the unique identifiable information would make tracking blocking and or wiping devices much more streamlined so i don't need to go and check oh no when which phone is missing again okay cool cool cool. let me call the um the phone company and, and try to do this i can simply log into a system okay the phone that was missing was this one because i have the imea number and the mac address okay let's block it from our network by blocking the mac address right because the MAC address is, is, is the fingerprint of the phone on the network. So once I block the MAC address, they can't get back onto our network. That's number one. Let's block the IMEI number as well. So they cannot get onto any network again in the UK. So not only is the SIM card blocked, the phone is blocked from using our network and the, and, and the SIM card or phone is blocked from making any UK call. So the phone is pretty much useless. So if there's any information on there or they're trying to get into our systems using that phone, it's not going to be possible anymore. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, number three, again, let me go back to the top question. A policy could be put in place that follows the following rules. Now, all of this is just for those three things I mentioned before. I've tied it all into one because this can relate to all of them. You don't have to do it like this. If you want to do justification reason, justification reason as two big paragraphs, that's fine. I have decided to do it this way. At the end of each week, a device headcount should be performed on all hardware devices, uh, same as letter C and point I. To be fair, these things, I think I put that there because these can be more or less the same thing. Um, so I'm going to skip that one for now. As soon as a device, again, this is stuff that we're going to put in a policy. So as soon as a device is no longer in use, it needs to be returned to its storage location for safekeeping and charging. So not only do we... Um, put it there for safekeeping but if we make that the charging point as well if you think about it when you're in college school uni whatever you're going to have these laptop trolleys that people push around and get laptops out of as soon as you're done with the laptop if you don't put it back in the in in the space that you're you've taken it from when you're ready to use it again it's going to be dead so this is going to be an incentive for people to always put it back in that location Again, this is my reasoning. Uh, reason making this making this a policy would somewhat drive the point home more, letting employees know that there might be some form of uh, excuse me some form of punishment if the rules are not followed. I didn't want to use the word punishment, but at the time I'm so tired I couldn't think of another word. But you guys know what I mean. If something um, were to happen, let's say you need to do your work, but the laptop that you normally used or the laptop that you were using you didn't put it back in the space that it was supposed to go back to, then you won't have a laptop to use next time because you didn't charge it. It's that simple. Um, okay, so possible policy additions. And I've said here, you may want to add a policy or amend a policy. What I mean here, you might want to create a policy. And remember, at the very top of mine, I've said that none of these things um, were in any policy. So there was no policy present from the evidence shown to me anyway. Um, that had anything to do with any of these things. So what I'm going to do in my instance for the, in this instance for this one is I'm going to create a policy. But let's just say you wanted to um, speak speak about uh, theft of IT equipment, for example, which I could add in one of here as well. But I'm just going to leave it for now. If you wanted to manage, speak speak about theft of IT equipment, you could just simply amend that policy to have stuff to do with theft. That's what you have to do. Amending simply means adding to. So add to that one, but I don't want to do that. I created a mini policy, let's say with these well, five or I thought it was six points with these six points, sorry, five points. So the policy name, I'm going to call this one IT equipment storage and log policy. So we have to log everything. So that is very easy to track and we have to know where IT equipment is being stored. So it's very easy again to keep track of it. So if I on a Monday morning, Tuesday morning run to, what did I say before? Trolley one uh socket five and there's no phone i'm going to go okay who took this phone last i can go to the log and check and if the log says mike brown took it and i go to mike and he's like oh my god i think i left it on the table then we know the phone is gone right it's much easier to 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 figure out what's going on in the grand scheme of things and then the next item i have uh, again these are terms in the policy maybe not the best worded things but let me try and explain it so you guys can get the gist of it First one says it must be tagged as soon as they are received from the mailroom. So there's probably going to be a mailroom. It's probably a big company. As soon as you get the device and as a manager, that's probably your job. You're going to take the phone. You're, you're going to look at the database and say, OK, well, I, I think I mentioned 20 iPhones before. We had 20 iPhones before. We just ordered five more. So this is going to be 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 iPhones. This is going to be for the IT department. Um, the, the storage area is going to be IT locker um socket or or sorry so, yeah socket five some, something along those lines right so we tag it straight away 
item details must be added to the database spreadsheet as soon as they are tagged. So the database, again, I, I say database loosely because a database is simply somewhere where you store data that is, is queryable, you, you can search for, you can do something with it. It could be a spreadsheet, it could be a Word document, it could be an, an actual Microsoft Access database, it could be whatever you want, don't worry about that, just say database or spreadsheet is what I would do. Once an item is no longer in use, it must be returned to the storage cabinet. Again, this is something I'm, I'm creating a policy based on what I recommended earlier. I'm just not using as many words. So the same things I recommended earlier, I'm coming here and, and saying them again. If a user needs to access any IT equipment from the storage areas, they need to add their details on those of the device to the database and permission granted by the manager on shift. So there's a database. You add your details. You're saying, my name is... Um, Bob Brown. I'm taking this phone out at 1 p.m. The phone I'm taking is iPhone. What did I say? iPhone 25. iPhone's 25 IMEI number has always been 192, 192, whatever the, the IMEI number is. The MAC address is uh, 5A6. Again, we don't care. We're putting the details in there and making sure it's there and that's it. And obviously a manager has to, a manager, it would be nice if a manager is always there to sign it off. But once you put it in the log and maybe I could add something strange or weird, like have a camera over each cabinet. So as soon as someone goes there to take a phone out or put something in or a laptop in or a, or a tablet in, I, I can go back, not me specifically, but we can go back and check what the person took out, what the person put back. Lastly, um, again, I, I can add more, but I was just trying to give an overview. The database needs to be checked weekly for any missing or damaged items. Notes need to be added to explain what happened and the actions to follow. So the things that you're going to do in the future. Now, I know this was very long winded and my apologies, but this is how I would do mine. Um, there's no wrong way to do this, to be fair. Once you have these bullet points, which again, the title of the document, an introduction detailing what you're going to speak about, the main body, which is again going to be the recommendations and justifications where you refer to things that you saw in, in uh, the evidence. So the recommendations would come from things that went bad. So the main body, I would say, uh, maybe things that went bad have a decent list of things that went bad. I think the 2018 paper had about 13 from the examiner's report. I've put that in the description as well. And from the things that went bad, what would you recommend you do next time? That's what this is. And from your recommendations, justify. So why did you recommend that thing? That's it. So if you have this ser these series of bullet points or, or headings here, you should be good. Mine was a bit convoluted because this is how my brain works, but I still have all the information there. So in my opinion, once the examiner reads all of this and sees what they want to see, and again, I've made it very obvious. I've said, I've made things bold like policy followed um, for this problem. And I've said the answer, there is no policy. And, uh, and I've done that for all three of them. And here I've gone ahead and I've said the things that they should have followed. Um, and the reason I've made bold again, hopefully that covers everything. Hopefully you guys found this useful. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions and good luck on this exam. Any questions you, you guys have, put it in the description. And what I might do is make a video answering all of the questions at once or just answer them as I see them. But it's a bit long to type video um, in the reply section sometimes. So let me know if you guys need any more help and good luck again. Good luck, good luck, good luck.